Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 Long War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and we're playing Legendary Iron Man of this beautiful mod. It is time for better one. We are at episode number 39, still in the first few months and it's time to shake uh, some, uh, some attention in South Africa. We're going to neutralize an advent uh, vehicle with an important target. Uh, so whenever it says that you get advent's attention, essentially what that means is advent uh, will increase its force level there. Uh, so it's a kind of double-edged sword. Uh, however, on the other end, we're getting 21 intel plus an intel package, which, which is worth another 20, 30, maybe 40 intel. So we're going to go in, got a nice little SWAT here uh, for this particular mission, and we're going to see the Reaper for the very first time. So without further ado, let's get this rolling. Good, here we go. Capture or kill the VIP. We're starting concealed, but since there is already a warning of reinforcements incoming, Please be very much aware that reinforcements will be coming. Uh, it's the first time that I'm playing uh, with our Reaper. Um, the patch notes uh, said that the Reaper's detection radius is in line with the Shinobi's detection radius, whatever that means. Uh, normally, the Reaper has an absolute monstrous stealth, which is uh, impenetrable for most of the enemies. So we're going to see about that. I will always find you an alien patrol. So from what I can see, the drones pretty much can spot us out. So maybe the stealth of the Reaper is not as good as I initially thought. However, two are more... Uh, no, that's two... Um, two extra hit points. I was thinking for a second that would be two armor, uh, making it very tanky, but that's not the case. Anyways, our gunner. We can already see there is no one over here. I'd like to put our gunner in a solid position, right over here. Good, got another hostile squad that is that is as expected. Hmm. Let's put another position up here. Our infantry, so we have the high ground. Demolition expert is moving forward to here. We'll keep our specialist a little bit back. And we got another Shinobi. That is an odd team. We got a uh, special. Uh, we got a Reaper and a Shinobi. What was I thinking when I designed this particular team? I don't think that we need two stealth-based characters. Well, I must have had a thought, elsewise I wouldn't have done it, but I'm, I'm a bit surprised. Ooh, both of the patrols are now standing here. If we could blow up the car, that would be awesome. But I think we don't have remote start yet. Not sure if we've been spotted out, but it appears to be not the case. Okay, great. Ooh, ooh! Behave. 
So first thing that they have changed is remote start is, is now an ability which can only be used once. Well, that makes sense. I am in agreement that it was ridiculously overpowered. So I guess that's okay. Ghost Walker. We'll reduce our ability to be detected for two turns. That's fine. And I like to keep it that way. So we're moving up here and I will do a remote detonation with a remote start. This essentially will kill an entire pack. Think about it. It's still really, really strong. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Pretty balanced. <laughs> I like it. All right, moving forward. We know it's 10 to 12 enemies. Now, we don't want to be spotted out yet. Wait a second, we can hack something. Let's take a look. Infiltrating access point. Okay, so we would get a nice little aim and crit chance. Failed hack results in being detected. Yeah, I suppose we can do that once we are being detected. Position confirmed. Moving a little bit further. Once we're being detected, the reinforcements will start coming in, so the longer we can stay not detected and keep on moving, the better. I think the drone sooner or later will spot us out. Or maybe not. The drone apparently does not care. So how about... We are pulling all of them with a nice little rocket. I think that would work out well, wouldn't it? What could possibly go wrong? Fortifying our position. And let's engage these guys. This breaks concealment and will also trigger the drone. One of them died right away, the other two now start like moving. And the drone finally starts moving as well. Doesn't spot out the Reaper because we've used Ghost Walker, so I'm fine with that. Let us use our high ground here. There we go. One down. He 
These guys here are a bit annoying, but I, I fear if we're moving closer, they will run and scatter and might even spot out the Reaper here. The Reaper, on the other hand, I'd like to use her to double check that we're not kind of missing something. Okay. Seems legit, so we're simply moving up to here, making sure that we're not missing anything. Alright, now we can essentially move up. And what's our chance of hitting one of these guys? So 50%. I think that's good enough for now. Unfortunately, didn't hit. We can overwatch with our gunner. Gotta be careful that we're not in range of uh, the purifier. If they're starting to ignite us, uh, once you're burning, you're essentially losing at least one turn. Okay, Overwatch. And Overwatch. I mean, this is really a question, do we want to go in that aggressively? So we've killed two packs so far, which is six plus the drone, that's seven. There's definitely another pack. And given that the exit zone is over here, it's very likely that there is a pack pretty near. So what I want to do is get into a better position and we're probably going to overwatch yes we're most likely going to take a shot but that's better than um, triggering another pack without having the ability to follow up Right, easy peasy so far. By the way, my encoder, in case you are seeing the uh, the burning there, my encoder of OBS, it runs absolutely fine. These memory leaks are a portion or uh, a function of uh, long war. In normal XCOM, this here does not happen. It's again the lost. Something is wrong with them. Good, let's take a look. Um, apparently no other enemies are there. Uh, normally if the, the camera starts to like go down into the first person mode, you can pretty much see whether or not there is, um, there is another pack hiding. All right, not bad. He's running away. We definitely got to deal with a loss. Unfortunately, we don't have any more um, explosive charges because this year as an explosion would have been beautiful.
Let's in the meantime start clearing out most of the loss. I think we can simply hit them. Yeah, 99% chances are good. Good enough. Not this turn, but the next turn we're going to see a couple of new reinforcements, so I want to really move a bit forward and get ready to welcome the reinforcements. Luckily, our gunner has a really solid aim. So all of these shots were incredibly easy. Now it's a 50-50 to kill the um, captain. Fortunately a miss, but given that we hit all of the others, I am okay with it. We have enough follow-up in case this year does not work out as intended. So that's an easy kill for the captain. And we might be triggering uh, the last pack. <laughs> Look at that. Sneaky little bastard. What do we got here? Target down. Got something good here. All right, the good news is we haven't triggered an additional pack. We only triggered a single enemy. Nasty faceless one. Of course, gazing shots. Just what you need when you're facing the faceless ones. All right, moving into full cover. Not 100% uh, shots, so what we're going to do is we're going to kill the faceless one. Perfect. Moving up, and maybe we can get one or two more of the loss. Probably only one because we don't have an auto loader. Let's still give it a try. 80% chance. Didn't work out. Good, we're continuing to move closer. And we gotta deal with those guys, and they are annoying. Technically, they should immediately die. I'm not sure what that means for us being stealth or not. Yeah, we don't have uh, the silent killer uh, talent yet, so we're we're being revealed, but that's okay. For the I 
cannot hunt without bullets. Give me time to reload. Okay, our shinobi will probably take some damage. And maybe the VIP will take some damage as well. So we killed 6 plus the drone plus the faceless one. Uh, that is 8. This one here is number 9. Which means there might be technically another pack of 3. It's very likely that we're only going to see packs of 1. The drone offers itself as a, I would say, potential target. And there we go. I think we're going to be hit twice with a Shinobi. No, only once and we're being protected, so that's fine. And it's our turn again. All right, let's go. So first things first, got to clear as many of uh, these loss as possible. Our best bet definitely is our gunner. Really absolute fantastic aim. Moving up. And let's get rid of the other loss. Okay, before we kill this one, I think we're better off simply moving another time. Let's double check. So, let's simply kill the loss first. We don't want to deal with the VIP yet. No compromises. My ammunition is nearly depleted. Moving up. I don't know why the loss are slowing it down that much. And if we just trigger another pack... Wait a second. Is that new pack triggered or not? Okay. The answer is pretty clear. It is triggered. Wow. Something really awful is happening. The frame rate dropped substantially. Okay, so this is the last pack for sure. Good news is we can simply go into the shadows and essentially ignore most of uh, the enemies here. De dealt with the last one here. So, if we were to attack someone... So, it appears as if... I'm still not sure where exactly that snake is currently positioned. This is... Unf very unfortunate. 
One of the things that we can do is we could certainly attack the snake here. However, the positioning is really bad. Like we would we would be open for a flank. We gotta deal with the drone here in one way or, the, or another. Hmm. Let me think about it. I mean, that's certainly an option. This is full cover, so not an option. Yeah, why not? Let's try to get down the drone. Okay, we shredded it at least. That's not too bad. If we were to attack the drone, we could do it in a way so that we are essentially behind cover. Which isn't too bad. And we could reload on top of it. I like the prospect of that. Yeah, let's do that. Solid chance that we would kill the drone. Which we just did. So that was good. We could put a claymore here. And explode the entire car. First of all, let's move everyone in range. So that's a no brainer. This is also a no-brainer. We just need to be a bit closer to the front line. Let's get uh, become invisible, so we're kind of ignoring the typical problems of half cover. And if we play our cards right, yeah, we can't, we cannot quite hit, hit the claymore. Fortunately, we don't have an auto loader. If we had one, we could hit it. It's a bit of a bummer. Because now we can't hit the snake. Well, what we could do though is we could hit uh, the flashbang grenade so that way we're at least disabling its poison, making it harder for the snake to hit us. There we go. Okay. Bit of a wasted claymore, but if the snake does not move, which disorientation will more likely uh, let it stay right where it is. Well, almost. 
Ooh, that snake, however, just took its place. Perfect. They just poisoned the VIP. Interesting. And a few more overwatches. So apparently they are very, very afraid that we're moving. Alright, and it's our turn again. Time for a reload. And time for an explosion. The car is burning. Unfortunately, it hasn't yet fully exploded. We do not have an assault, so no one with lightning reflexes, I think. No, 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 and no. Nope. No one with lightning reflexes. We're activating Ghost Walker again. Uh, can't really find a good position anywhere near. I'd like to have a flanking position, however that would be too exposed. This here are, these here are great positions, but I fear with the explosion that's upcoming, it's not the best to stand there. How about anything like over here? No, that wouldn't work. Yeah, really not the best position. I don't like it. How, do, how are we going to deal with the Overwatch? Let's use the Body Shield. Which means that Viper here is going to get some hefty negatives against us as we're moving a bit closer. Moving up to here. That should trigger an overwatch. And thanks to the body shield, we're not even hit. Plus the Viper also was disoriented, so... Pretty much a no-brainer. 50-50, we can't suppress it, so might as well try to hit it. Normally I don't like to take 50-50 shots, but in this particular case, I think it's okay. On my way. Moving up. Again, 50-50 shot. Fortunately, just grazing hit. We still got plenty of time to get out of here, so instead of using half cover... Yeah, I, I wanted to get here into full cover. Problem is that we're only seeing this one Viper in full cover. All 
Alright, that's the second Overwatch. There was no other way other than to trigger it. You know what? I think we're killing that uh, further snake, so it really doesn't matter that we're in half cover for now. 50-50, and we still got the Reaper if that's not going to work out. Yeah, so the backup plan is using the Reaper. The VIP is absolutely annoying and in the way. Cannot stress that enough. can't reach. Nah, that is unfortunate. I don't want to get rid of our concealment. I actually value it quite a bit because we can set up a flank next turn. So this here is going to explode and hopefully the Viper will be killed in the process of it. I'd rather keep our concealment. I'll be there soon. Worst case it's going to use its poison spit ability but we're not going to take any massive casualties or something. The VIP is almost dead, by the way. So we're sending in full cover. That was the beauty about this uh, move. The Lost Swarm will take care of the Overwatch and probably also We'll take care about the frame rate. Yeah, there we go. Again, like 20 loss. I think that is a dark event and I am going to be absolutely happy once that dark event is over. I like the extra XP, don't get me wrong, but the losses are just... They're just prolonging the missions. Alright, our turn again. Let's see. Moving up in the hopes of killing one of the Vipers. Fifty-fifty. Unfortunately, not the one that was already damaged. Good, we're getting into full cover just because if we're being spotted out, I want to make sure that our position is good. 
This here is most likely a kill. Very nice. Okay, so, yeah, so we're not, we're, we wouldn't even fully kill it. Moving. Let's move over and make sure that we can deal with the VIP. If we're now subduing it, we would essentially trigger the reinforcements right away. <clears throat> if we're letting it live, then he is probably going to die next turn due to the poison. So, subdue it is. My hope is, I've never had a poisoned... Um, a poisoned VIP that is unconscious at the same time. My hope is we are going to stop the poison with that. Got it covered. In the meantime, we're hunkering down here. Just so that we're not having a really good target. This should have triggered overwatch shots, to be honest. I'm mildly disappointed that it didn't. And next turn will be basically clean up of the loss and kill off the last Viper and then we're getting the hell out of here. Alright, and it's our turn again. Like I said, time to clean up the loss. Reinforcements are going to come in next turn. As you can see, we're completely overrun by the losts now. So time to use the character with the most ammunition to clean them up. Thankfully, our gunner, ba Badger here, seemed to have no problem at all doing that. Gosh, I know how fast the animations work in the normal XCOM now with my new graphic card. And this is just day and night. I promise you. Might as well kill the last one. Alright, there we go. Target neutralized. And 50-50 to kill the Viper. Or to hit the Viper. There we go. That's good. We're going to be able to kill it. Moving up. Flanking it. Absolutely. And then killing it. Finally. Good copy. Moving on target. Mm 
All right. We almost got all of them down, which is good. One overwatch for wherever the reinforcements are going to come in. No, we're not going to do 50% uh, shot. Another overwatch over here. Let's pick up the unit. Putting ourselves here. Moving just a little bit further to the front line and then we're awaiting the reinforcements. This here is annoying by the way. The two only things that I've uh, so far seen in this mod which I uh, do not like or which I which were worse than I anticipated is the complete lack of positioning. Like these positioning errors make it super difficult even if you know where the enemies are. It's just, it's annoying. So that needs to be fixed. And the second one is the absolute memory dumpster with all of the loss. Uh, that, I don't know, it, it simply doesn't make any sense. Good, here we go. One more group of enemies. Let's try to go for the loot. I like that idea. We might pull the last pack whilst doing that. What? He can't pick up the loot? Are you kidding me? And by the way, what the actual ha heck is happening here? You're blocking the only entrance up there and we can't even shoot civilians. Well, it's a nice way of, um, of letting the game tell you, you shall not leave here. Not before at least one of your soldiers is going to horribly die. Nice. An Alarum Core, that's 20 supplies. Good. We know that they are just back here. And now it's a matter for us to simply get out of here in time. Moving into cover. Double movement for everyone. If possible, we can also leave next turn already. Alright, moving here. Not much of, over uh, of an Overwatch crew left, but we got some good positioning. I don't want to position ourselves in the open and I also uh, this might trigger the pack I don't want to do that so we're taking the safe route which is moving into full cover Again, he's randomly running somewhere. I don't even know why.
Good. Let's see what the enemy is going to do. Well, luckily we put everyone into cover, like I suggested. Elsewise, this would have been a pretty bad scenario. Alright, another Lost Swarm. Perfect. We definitely can't leave this round, so we gotta fight them. We can leave with a couple of our soldiers, but we can't leave with all of them. And since the swarm this time is coming from the back, we are motivated to leave even faster. All right, our turn again. Let's see. I'm wondering, is this civilian really going to stay up there? No, she's not, and we could simply move up. Which at least I'm going to do to get rid of the VIP here. I think she's not even standing there anymore. But yet another graphical mishap. Okay, so the question is, can everyone leave? If the answer would be yes, we're out of here. Unfortunately, we're like one tile short of leaving. Okay, so he's definitely standing in the way, which means, or she's definitely standing in the way, which means if we could move her out of the way, we might be able to leave. Let's try to evac everyone. I don't want to fight these guys. Alright, another try. Can we... reach the upstairs now that she's gone. No, just barely not. Okay, it's not the end of the world because we do have pretty solid cover up here, out of line of sight. There's another one up here, out of line of sight. So. It's actually okay. Let's get everyone else out. All right, that's one, two. None of the enemies has a sort of disorientation or, or mind control, so we should be fine. We can simply walk out.
Thanks to the loss, everything is now grinding down to an absolute halt. Good. Fortification? Yes, please. I think the position that we're going to take is up here. Pretty confident that no one can reach us in a single move. And even if they could, we would still be fortified and be treated as if we had cover. Alright, let's see what the enemy turn is going to show us. They are simply moving around. Okay. Well, that was more damage than I anticipated, but luckily we had enough hit points left over. So a bit of a bit of a tough call. On the other hand, if we would have fought, it's very likely that we wouldn't have killed all three of them immediately. Good, let's skip the Lost. And here we are, the Lost moved in. And we're going to do what we anticipated to do originally. Fortunately, we were one field short. That's not going to happen again. And way more injured than I would want. We are taking out the Technician. Killed 36 out of 51 enemies and we not even killed the enemy VIP but we also uh, took him with us so success complete success what a nice little mission after the flawless smash and grab we got ourselves a pretty good chunk of intel and only 12 days for such a grievous wound isn't bad either four promotions is pretty good so we're definitely going with Shredder. Baya here was phenomenal. I absolutely like how she was uh, hitting all of the loss. So I like the extra radius. That's pretty good. But Silent Killer is good as well. Matter of fact, I think we're going to take both. Silent Killer is just a really good ability. No, uh, no way we're not taking it. We need to give her a better weapon though, but it's good. It's really good. I like Ever Vigilant, but I like the Walkfire even better. Helps us to deal with cover. Hmm, that's interesting. She got a smoke grenade for free. Might even want to take it. Formidable, however, is even better. Two extra bonus hit points and reduction uh, from explosive damage. I think we're going to save for that. And we're going for a Blade Master. Damn, high, uh, damn good ground doesn't help us. One free flashbang isn't bad. I 
I like Center Mars, I like Untouchable, so there are a couple of really good abilities later. Of course, you always get the good stuff later. And Ernst Weber is with us. We got an Alarum Core with 20 resources and an autoloader on top of it. We got ourselves up to 195 intel. That is a good amount of intel. And this is going to reduce the contract cost for the next area even further, so more intel for us. Avenger plotting new course. And maybe we're going to branch out. So let's see, smash and grab. 10 days, oh that's good. Which means we can fully infiltrate this and get some more material out of it. 10 days is like the best that you could get. Speaks for our high amount of intel uh, that we're getting. Let me set something up. 9 days, 23 hours is awesome. Alright, we got a team. Uh, instead of using 8, which we theoretically could, I still keep a couple of people in reserve because there might be another mission that's popping up and I feel 6 is a really good sweet spot at the moment can do most of the missions. Um, the more people you do have from time to time, you're running out of good positions to cover and it just also drags down the combat turns quite a bit. So we do have enough like sustainability and we got ourselves a typical team like one scout. Uh, I wanted to use uh, Outrider again. Uh, got a couple of uh, soldiers, just simple like uh, weapon weaponiers. I think uh, with Bacha here, we have an absolute monster gunner and I want to um, uh, use her. We got uh, an assault uh, with a shotgun for flanking support. Got a granite, uh, got a technician uh, to remove cover and essentially a specialist to deal with the healing. So, so far so good. I uh, could use another grenadier probably because um, we have a lot of technicians. And I really like how the Grenadiers become strong in the end game. Good. Let us heal a little bit and soon the next mission will pop up most likely. And then that's the end of this episode. We're almost uh, we're already more than an hour in. We got another destroy an alien relay. Intel Intel package. Yeah, I mean, why not? We just barely got someone who recovered from their wounds. Seven days is enough time for an infiltration. Let's see if I can put a team together. Seems easy enough. Alright, got a team together. It's not the best team, but it's hopefully going to get the job done. It's kind of uh, the last uh, people that we do have. Two Shinobis. We got a Grenadier here with a lot of grenades to uh, at least remove some cover and uh, hope, uh, help with the uh, flashbangs. We got uh, an infantry for DPS and a sniper plus a support. Should be good enough. Again, baseline will be seven to nine enemies, so not a difficult mission. We found it really early in the progress. Gosh, so many missions at the same time. Avenger plotting new course.
Good. Well, let's heal up and I think we're pretty much ready for the next mission then. Setting course for the East African sector. Okay. Protect the data tip and protect the resistance assets. So that is not exactly what I wanted to see. So what we can do in this particular case is we can take a look at all of the other missions. 29% infiltrated. 39% infiltrated. Uh, da -da -da -da. Oh, we didn't even do that one. Yeah, we're probably going to do the following. I'm just going to boost this one here. To 100%. We're then going to do the mission and use the team in order to do the other mission. What kind of SWAT do we have? Well, we have <laughs> SWAT with the rookie. Wonderful. Okay, we better do the mission really, really well. And yeah, the other option is doing Quebec, but we don't want to do that right away. We essentially got to do this mission. And let's take a look. I think we do have one or two more soldiers that we could put onto the uh, onto the mission to defend our territory. So one more Shinobi and one more Grenadier. Which means if we play the next mission flawless, we would have a group of six to put onto this mission. Anyone else coming in soon? Probably not. It's, it's days until they recover. Lightly wounded 18 hours. Maybe we could do uh, do that. The willpower is really low though. So Sean, Sean, uh, Sean against might assist us. So uh, it's kind of a nail biter we only have 21 hours for the other mission so we would essentially need to speed up this healing process as well anyways we're going to do that the next time it is getting more and more intense the aliens are fighting back and i can already tell you this is not how you're normally supposed to play normally you're supposed to simply accept that the aliens uh, win uh, most of the missions but not in this run ladies and gentlemen in this run we're going to beat it into them until they are um, unconscious thank you so much for watching uh, lovely to have you on board and you know the drill, a comment and a like down below. Thank you, have a great day and bye bye.